Is there anybody in here that wants to communicate tonight? Oh my God, dude. Turn left onto North 6th Street. The Clayton House, located in Fort Smith, Arkansas was built in 1852 by Mr. Sudden, who later abandoned the home during the Civil War. The house served as a Union Army hospital until William Henry Harrison Clayton purchased the home. Clayton enlarged and renovated it into its Victorian Gothic style and moved into the home with his family in 1882. It is now a historic house museum, but this property has a darker side that guests and employees have all witnessed. The angry tall man has been seen around the home, peeking around corners, stalking angrily and disappearing when people try to follow him. There are also reports of the woman in the brown dress. She is more peaceful and has her hair pulled back in a bun. What secrets hide within these walls? We're about to find out. What's up everybody? We have made it to the Clayton house here in Fort Smith, Arkansas, and we're about to do the investigation here in about an hour, and we're just kind of taking in the scenery and, and uh, seeing what's, what, we can, what we can get out here. This house is almost 200 years old, and it has a lot of weird paranormal things going on there, and there's a lot of people who have witnessed it. What we're trying to do tonight is get some answers. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, apparitions that are known to be in this house. Um, one of them is the man with the hat, the top hat. Uh, he seems to be kind of angry. And uh, then there's also the lady with the bun who actually the picture that we showed is over there. <clears throat> that picture was taken by one of the directors here. And they were just snapping you know, pictures and the lady was just standing there. Uh, we'll be back here in uh, about an hour, and we're going to see what we can get tonight. So, thanks for watching. All right, hey, this is Lana with Natural State Paranormal, and we are at the Clayton House in Fort Smith, Arkansas. We have the director here. Yes. And what is your name again? Myla. Myla. Uh, she's going to tell us a little bit about it. Um, so, how long have you been working here? I've been here about three and a half years. Three and a half years, and have you had any personal experiences yourself? So I have. Uh, a couple years ago, there was a movie filming here, and it was called The Riot Act, and it was a very cool movie filmed all on real historic sites throughout the state of Arkansas. And I was upstairs, they were filming downstairs, and I was upstairs um, with the sound guy looking for how he was going to run some wires the next day for a night shoot. And as we were walking out of one of the rooms, um, we got to the top of the stairs, and the bedroom door that we walked out of slammed shut about 300 or about 180 degrees and like if you see that how this door is flush against the wall that's uh -huh. how the door upstairs was and then it slammed completely shut oh wow and we tried to recreate it by uh jumping up and down yeah. and seeing and even if the door is partially opened it always falls open mm -hmm. and, and never closed so huh. that was that was a little freaky yeah yeah i can imagine um, there's been a lot of paranormal investigators that have come out here yes. and done overnight um have yes. you seen any in stuff from them that's been so they them? yeah a lot of them have found um activity lo lots of pictures of orbs um oh, yeah. we did have one team that came in and she identified a couple extra ghosts that um other teams ha ha have not actually um encountered so okay. that was kind of cool um, but yeah, they, we have not had any that have come in and said they didn't have any activity. Right. So there have been a lot of people in and out of this house. It, during the Civil War, it did serve as a time as a Union hospital. Mm -hmm. 
And then uh, from 1920 until 1968, it served as a boarding house. And so mm. lots of people were born here and then probably also died here right, as well. So, right. um, so there's probably a lot of, yeah, a lot of residual history. activity sure. going on. Uh, well, can you take us around maybe to some of the hot spots? Sure. We had a lot of orbs um, seen in this area here. Okay. Um, we have a lot of Clayton family artifacts in this case, and so that yeah. one of the teams that came through thought that might be why we had a lot of activity yeah, there. Yeah, sure, sure. During the filming of that movie, um, when they were there was a picture taken from the hallway into here, and there was the profile of a a woman oh, wow, who okay. wasn't here. Um, in right over here, which was okay. kind yeah. of exciting. Yeah, definitely. So this landing has actually had a lot of activity. I, um, just even on, on regular tours, people who seem to be sensitive to sensing uh -huh. yeah. uh, spirits have felt a, a lot of stuff on, on this landing. Like they get like touched or? Um, yeah, like feeling cold spots. Uh -huh. um, and just sort of a, a, a sensing a presence here okay. on this landing. All right. So this was the room that I was in when the door slammed shut. We now have a chair in front of it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so okay. this, this room and then this room here, one of the past teams that came through felt a lot of residual energy in here. Mm -hmm. And she thought that the lead person in their investigation thought it might be the way that the mirrors are positioned. In it that could room. be, yeah. Facing each other? Yeah, they're, it makes a triangle. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 And then um, another kind of creepy thing that we've all sort of witnessed is that in our doll case here, these two dolls right here who represent um, Sarah Polk and um, Mary Tyler move. And uh, move as in like their sometimes, hands they'll, move? sometimes they'll shift and face each other. So they like physically Sometimes. move around. No, no, like their limbs don't move, but yeah, the, the, okay. the figurines actually move, have moved forward. They've moved towards each other. The case is always kept locked. And is there like a hot spot for the man in the top hat? No, and um, n not that I know of. I think um, most people who get the sense here on the landing that it's the woman. Uh -huh. um, if I were to guess, I would assume that the energy in the in the study is probably the man. Okay. Do you have any idea who that could be? Well, um, I mean, it could be William, I guess, who was our namesake down in that room. Um, on occasion, you'll smell um, pipe tobacco. Okay. Um, okay. And so I know this is there's the other building. I don't even know where we're at at this point, but it, where where they took the original picture of the woman with the bun. Is that a building we can go into, the side building? Yes, it's, it's our detached kitchen. Okay, can you show me that? Yeah, absolutely. So it's this window here. Yeah. yeah. Wow, well, okay. Um, yeah, so, which looks out over our garden. Very interesting. So in the original house, when um, Clayton's on the house, this would have been the, the servants' quarters, and their kitchen was detached from the main okay, house. Okay. Um, this wasn't renovated when they did the original renovations in the 70s. That was discovered in the mid 80s when they um, were doing some landscaping, and then they know, they found the foundation of okay. the kitchen and the. Oh. I guess that pretty much sums it up. Uh, we're going to get started here, and if you haven't noticed, we have our masks on because it's the middle of COVID right now. So hopefully, we we'll figure out something to do with that. But thank you for being here and of allowing course, us thank to you do so much. It. Good luck. kitchen portion of the Clayton house and this little area back here is was the servants quarters all right is there anybody in here that wants to communicate tonight we're here for you I'm 
going to put this uh, recorder down here on the table here. And uh, if you have anything to say or want to communicate with us, go ahead and uh, touch that little device and you can talk into it. And this is where the picture of the woman in brown was taken at this window looking outside. Also got a milligauss EMF detector. Turn that on. Looks like it's pretty much zeroed out. So don't see anything that's too strange. Walk over here. Sure. What? I'm jumping some muscle in that mirror. Alright, you guys. You gotta let us know that you're here. Can you make this uh, EMF reader spike? Ow. Just hit a table. Let's hit a kitchen table. All right. Jeez. Lynn. Lynn. My battery just went from full to one. Are you serious? Yeah, look. I just charged it up. What? It just went all the way down, like I said. It was on full, and I just watched it go all the way down to one. Are you serious? Yes. Alright, if that was you that drained the battery, then you can touch this device. Give us a sign that you're here. You want to knock on the wall? Push a table, maybe? You just drained a lot of uh, energy out of his battery, so you should be able to do something. Still getting a pretty flat on in my reading, so I'm not really sure what that's about. Go over to that window. Go to the window? Yeah, go over there and hold it to the window. Is there anyone here? Yeah, I think there's been photographs of a woman in this room. If you're here right now, can you try to communicate with us by knocking on something or moving something? Or speaking? Still 0, 0.0. If you want to talk to us, now's the time. We won't be in here very much longer. We've got an entire house to investigate, so... That is a car alarm outside going off. Ouch, that was me. Yeah, it's me. Sorry. Can you push a key on this piano? So this is the SP7 Spirit Box. Um, basically it scrolls through FM and AM frequencies, frontwards and backwards, and um, it scans through 10 or 5 channels every second. So basically we can hear just a, um, just a small amount of voices coming through it because it's scanning through radio stations, but we're going to do it on FM backwards. So, but it's scanning through five channels every second. So if it finds anything, or if it hears anything longer than just a little half a second, then we could say that that might be a spirit. So we're gonna to try to ask some questions right now. If you're here right now, can you come and talk into this device to slow that blue in my hand? We can hear you if you talk into this device.
We ran the spirit box for 15 minutes straight with no voices or noises. With so little activity in the servants' quarters, we decided to go back into the main house to continue our investigation. There has been reports of people feeling energy or even feeling being touched at the top of this staircase where it turns. So we are going to put a motion detector right here on the floor. And if anything walks in front of it, we're going to go to here. All right. We are upstairs in the doll cabinet. Uh, the two dolls you see there, the blue dress and the green dress. They have been known to move on their own. And uh, so I, we decided to set up this static camera and face them with a light so that we can see if uh, by the end of the night if they have changed positions because they are very known to do that. So we'll just leave this here and we'll see what happens. We pointed our static cameras at the dolls for four hours. After reviewing the footage, no motion was detected. Lights off. Yeah. Look at that. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my, my heart. Oh my god. It's hilarious. Alright, so here we are in the room with the three mirrors, the, the old mirrors that are um, um, hung up in a kind of a triangle shape. Just they're all kind of pointing towards each other. And um, it's kind of a uh, creepy thing to do because um, they say that mirrors are portals to the other side and they can, you know, um, pull in all the energy from whatever's going on, whether it's oh, sadness, <laughs> that was me, sadness, um, you know, anger, um, it can basically just retain all that information and um, pointing them all together. Um, at the same time, is kind of like a Bermuda's Triangle situation. So it's kind of strange um, to do that, but it's kind of interesting at the same time because it's uh, a different energy in here for sure. Um, we're going to head downstairs and check that out, and then we'll be back here shortly. Pretty sure that it was me. It's weird that it wouldn't go off when we walked right in front of it, but it went off when I got to the bottom of the stairs. Yeah, I think it Maybe there's something following me. As we get to the bottom of the stairs, something triggers our motion detector at the top of the stairs. We assume that I did it, but that's when I say, Maybe there's something following me. Then the microphone on my camera picks up what could have been an intelligent response. Listen to the boosted audio. Maybe there's something following me.
Yeah, I do. I guess, uh, go get your camera and let's just go through this bottom floor. What's up, spirits? What's up? It's, it's your boy! boy. <laughs> 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 Alright, so... This is another setting room. Is there anyone here who wants to communicate? If so, just talking to this little device that I've got here. And I'll be able to hear you. Hello. Is there anybody in here? Anyone that would like to communicate with us, just talking to this little device I'm holding. And we'll be able to hear you. That was me again. Literally hitting every single table in this entire house. I was on 13. Or 12. You said 12, I'm not going to put it up. No, no, that's not. 12. 12, it says 1 at the bottom. Can you hear me? Nope. <sighs> As we are doing an equipment test, an orb can be seen floating down the stairs and disappearing into the banister. The orb seems to change several times as well. Could this be the spirit of Mr. Clayton? I'm in the dining room right now. There's not a, all this furniture that's in here is antique furniture and you're not supposed to sit in it. So I found a folding chair in here. I'm gonna try to sit in. Is anyone in here? Can you try to move something? Can you try to tap on something? Can you open a door or shut a door? Can you make a tapping sound? Is there someone in here? Can you tap on something? So we can communicate. I heard that. The sound like goes behind me. Can you do that again? Can you make that sound again? If you can hear me, tap on something. Oh my god, dude. At this point, I heard three very loud taps coming from the right side of the room. I was visibly shaken as you can see me jump and look around to see if anyone was around me. Listen again, as what we find next is absolutely incredible. Oh my god, dude. Let's fucking scare the shit out of me. Dude, I just heard a really loud noise in here. No, dude. Oh my god. I was recording myself sitting there and I pointed the camera at myself and I heard something over here that was metal. It was pretty. I 
swear when I walk in here it's like this. It's not like that. Like that. Like this one hitting the handle and one by the other one. That right there. That's what I heard. As you can clearly see from the footage from when I walked into the dining room, the cup was in fact in front of the plate when I walked in. This was the best piece of paranormal evidence that I've ever captured personally. Although I was very scared, I stayed in the room for a while trying to see if I could get any other noises or voices on camera. After reviewing all of our evidence, there was nothing else captured in this room. So we move on to the next room. So, um, if there's anybody here that wants to communicate with us, uh, there's a device on the floor here in front of me, and um, you can speak into it, and we'll be able to hear you. If there's anyone in here, can you try to... Show yourself so I can see you with my own eyes. I think that was my stomach. If you heard something, that was my stomach. We had Mexican for lunch or dinner. That was really good. Let me tell you. As I turn my camera toward the living room, you can see an orb go in front of a chair. I debunk this as not being a bug, as it appears out of thin air and then disappears just as quickly. Okay, I'm sitting at the top of the staircase right now. I thought I heard a man talk up here. I'm going to sit here and try to be quiet for a minute. I felt something behind me. I thought it was just like a feeling. I suddenly feel a presence behind me and I am unable to see, so I left my camera up just in time to capture this light anomaly as it flies into the frame and over my shoulder. I thought it felt something behind me. I thought it was just like a feeling. Is there anybody up here that wants to communicate with us? Let's say use this device to talk to us. We can hear you. What is your name? That was weird. What is your name? What is your name? In our first spirit box response, we hear a man say Leo, although we aren't sure who he is. Come to this light that's in my hand and talk and we can hear you and we can communicate. Did you die in here? What's your name? Patrick. What's your name? Patrick. What's your name? Patrick. Did you hear that? Yeah. You said Patrick, right? Can you, right? Can you try to say that again? What's your name? Yeah. 
what? It said, like, can you help? No, dude. No way. Oh, I got chills, bro. Oh my god. Can you tell us what you need help with? Are you trapped in here? We were blown away by this intelligent response. We believed this voice to be William Clayton as he was an army lieutenant in the Union Army during the Civil War and later an attorney and judge. Here's the enhanced audio with the speed reduced and volume boosted. Are you trapped in here? This is an intelligent response to our question. Are you trapped here? I'm above the law. Are you trapped in here? All right, this is James and Lana. We are upstairs. This is the last investigation for the, the night. So we're up here together. We're gonna see what we can do. Which, but they both have three mirrors. And these two mirrors are facing each other. So we're kind of sitting like the mirror in the middle of some kind of spirit portal. Yeah. Is anyone in this room? Can you come to this device that has the blue light on it? And try to talk into it and we can communicate with you? My name is James and this is Lana. There's a device next to the light, one, one with the blue light. And if you get close to that device, we can tell that you're here. Can you come talk into the blue light? Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Are you a nurse in this house? Did you hear that? This is yet another intelligent response to our question, as we learned earlier that the spirit of the woman in brown could possibly be that of a nurse that worked in the home during its time as a Civil War Union hospital. Are you a nurse in this house? Our investigation of the Clayton House in Fort Smith, Arkansas left many questions unanswered. However, its long and complicated history means it might have more questions than answers. From a Union hospital, to a family home, to a historic house, this location doesn't share a lot of its secrets. Based on the evidence we've recorded, we can confidently say that the spirits still walk these hallways, protecting the stories within.